There we go. There we go. There we go. I'm figuring this thing out. I'm all good. I'm all good. All right. All right. Cool. So, so welcome. Uh, so, uh, been great chatting. I thought it, I, this was kind of like a fun test for me. I was like, Hey, um, I'll start the session early. I'll play some music. Uh, I give you a, a few video, a few video snippets of uh, sneak peek of the new CCNA 2020. Uh, so hopefully uh, that that kind of wet your taste buds. This is this is this is going to be fun. Um, so uh, I, I think the number one question I'm getting is when's the new CCNA material going to be done? I'm about three quarters of the way through it. Um, about 130 videos recorded so far. Keith Barker has recorded a bunch. Chuck, uh, you guys know him as Network Chuck, so I won't even tell you his last name. Network Chuck has recorded some, so so it's going to be a big uh, collaborative good. Thank, thank you. Thank you guys for uh, for all the kind words. Um, so let me, let me do this. So here's what I've been doing. Um, I've been going to the uh, CBT Nuggets website. By the way, a uh, little uh, little plug here. It's not even a plug, just kind of like a, this is a cool update. Um, CBT Nuggets has now implemented a certification playlists, uh, which is this new feature where they can, you can actually come in and, and if you're looking for a certification, they, they just started building, they don't have them all uh, completed yet, but if you're looking for a certification, uh, you can, you can click on them and it'll actually um, take you to the playlist that shows all of the different uh, videos that you should watch to become certified in those things. That's, that's new. That's fun. Um, so what I've been doing is I've been going to the uh, Kaplan practice exams that they have. Um, we've been actually just working through one of the, uh, uh, you know, piece by piece, one of the uh, uh, ICD-1 practice exams um, and going through the questions together, just collaborating on them. Hang on. I even, I even was working on it. Look at this to where I can do, I can do the video. I can, I'm a Twitch stud. Um, I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, learning Twitch piece by piece. This it's actually a really fun platform. Uh, the more that I get into it, the better and better it goes. So, uh, so this is so what I've been doing uh, is been uh, taking questions the whole time. By the way, just so you you can see what I'm looking at when I'm looking over here. Uh, a lot of times I'm looking at the chats, things like that. Looking up here, I I, I kind of see a, a video feedback, so I can make sure that I'm not uh, uh, you know off the camera or something's not gone wrong with the stream, uh, which has happened. So um, that being said, type in any questions. I actually have uh, a, a nameless volunteer who is screening all the questions for me so that, um, you know, it's, it's really hard to, to talk and, and say, say all the high. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this real quick. I'm going to say hello. First off, uh, Squirt Squirt X going for a job interview uh, next week. Um, good luck. Uh, I, I hope you do well. Um, the, um, oh, hey. My nameless volunteer is no longer nameless. Sun Strokel is uh, is uh, just saying, "Hey, uh, he'll he'll be the one." So so I'm gonna close it. See, this is what happens if if I'm staring at the chat. I'm just like, ah, it, ah. so so I'm gonna close the chat down. Thank you, uh, thank you for jumping in and doing that. And now let's let's do this. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna go through uh, go through these questions one by one, and uh, I want you to look at them, see if you can figure out what the answer is, and if so. Type it into the little chat. Uh, take your best step. Just put the letter. You don't have to type the whole thing. Um, then we'll talk about why the answer is right. So here we go. Question 19 is where we left off. Which of the following statements are true about trunk ports? So read those. Mm -mm -mm. Chat in your answers. By the way, the, the Kaplan... Uh, which is the, the, the transcenders evolution way of asking questions. They never tell you how many are right or wrong. They just kind of say, check however many. I, I drives me crazy, but just got to go with it. Take another, another couple minutes there. Read through, think. I'm still trying to sort my windows out. All right, good. So it looks like most most everybody is jumping in on A. So which which of the following statements are true about trunk ports? So let's 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 check A. Um, but let's so it uses 802.1Q to identify traffic from different VLANs. That is absolutely true. That is the tagging protocol. Um, that's that's what's used when um, when you when you uh, have switches connected together. Actually, it's funny. I was just uh, going through some of the new exam objectives for uh, the, the CCNA. Uh, trunk ports are used to connect switches to switches because as the traffic goes across, 
Uh, so you got this computer talking. As the traffic goes across, it puts the little tags on the front of that. Um, most other vendors in the world call their trunk ports tag ports. Um, Cisco just uses the word trunk. But uh, what Cisco wants you to know now is about virtualization. This is new CCNA material. They want you to know VMware uh, uses a trunk port, uh, Hyper-V, I'll put HV right there, because you can create virtual machines on here that you put in specific VLANs, and that trunk port will accept those tags and allow you to, to uh, segment those. So, so anyway, I'm off on a little tangent there, but a, a good one, you'll want to know that. Um, trunk port connects to end user workstation. Bah, nope. Trunk port uses a straight through ethernet cable when connecting two switches, has nothing to do with that. And a trunk port supports a single VLAN. Nope. So you guys are right on. A is the only correct answer. Uh, the explanations are phenomenal on these practice exams. They are, they are a learning method in themselves. All right. Question number two. Take that off. You are the network administrator for your company. Uh, you are a network administrator for your company. You want to restrict all ping attempts from outside your company from reaching internal hosts. Your internal network is using the IP of 215.24.0/24, what command should be executed on your corporate boundary router to accomplish the task? What do you think? Chat that in. You want to stop ping attempts from outside your company. Network is using the IP. This is, a, is an interesting question. Um, hardly anywhere in the world would your internal network use that IP. Those are public addresses. Looks like everybody's jumping on the, the, the C bandway. And I, I haven't even looked at them, so let's just see if we're right and then uh, go from there. Good, good, good. So accessless one. Okay, so, so first off, let's talk about the why. Um, if you're blocking uh, ping attempts, that's going to use ICMP echo requests. Um, so immediately you go, bah, bah, because both of those are standard access list. Standard just blocks everything. Um, it doesn't allow you to filter to a specific protocol. Um, so that leaves us answer A, a, and, uh, a and C. So this says deny anything to that subnet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that. Uh, access lists use wildcard masks, not CIDR notation. That's, that's, uh, that's a no-go. Uh, so that's why we've got the wildcard mask, which is the inverse mask. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's how that works. Uh, fame geek is saying if hair pinning, if hair pinning, I, so I, I know what hair pinning is. Um, so that would be where you've got, um, traffic coming in from, from one. Okay. I think I, I, I think it was, yeah. So you wouldn't want, <laughs> so no, <laughs> we're not, we're not going to go there. I, I think that would blow up everybody's mind. So hair pinning is where you have traffic coming in the interface and then flipping back around and going out. Um, if you're talking about hair pinning in terms of like sub interfaces going in and out, you could totally use access list hair pinning within the single interface. Uh, not going to fly, uh, with a, with a access list. Okay. So let's shoot on down to the next one. Question 21, match the dynamic trunking protocol configuration on the switch ports so that a trunk link can be established as in click and drag, um, drag the DTP modes on the left and place them on the corresponding one. Okay. This is good. Uh, so we've got the trunk modes, desirable, trunk, no negotiate, and auto. So it says, okay, we've got, yeah, that's this word. So, okay, so it's saying if the other side is either a trunk or desirable or auto, which of these modes would establish a trunk? Well, that's interesting. Desirable. Well, how's that working? So if there are any of, are you guys understanding this question format? Maybe it's just me. I'm staring at it. I'm like, I don't exactly know what it's asking here. Desirable. Oh, okay. I think I get it. So there, okay. So for instance, desirable would work with desirable. And so they're saying, okay, how about another one that would work? This is <laughs> heaven. Heaven help us all. If we get this question on the exam, we're like, what the? So, so uh, desirable. Yep. Okay. That's good. Um, so, so if it's trunk mode, trunk mode also would, would work. Right. Okay. So trunk or desirable. Okay. So, okay. Okay. So one side is trunk or desirable. 
what would work on the other side. The thing is, trunk or desirable would work, and so would auto. I don't. I'm not. I'm not following. What, so I'll, I'll go. I'll go with you, Tom. Um, I'm going auto next. Non negotiate. No negotiate. Yeah, then no negotiate is is what you're, you're going to use on the other side, and then trunk at the bottom. No negotiate next. <laughs> no ah, okay. <laughs> Let's say uh, X. So it didn't. I don't even think it told it. Oh, okay. Hang on. We're wrong. We're right. We're so wrong. We're so right. I don't think I. Okay. So. Trunk switch will establish if the other side is configured as trunk. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna stare at that question and just and and just say, um, right. I, I still don't think I, I understand the, the the question format. Um, so so let's let me just say this: trunk is a if you're what's the best way to explain it? Let me let me go let me go on the whiteboard. So let me do this. Um, so if you've got, if you've got a switch over here, um, that, by the way, on a real Cisco exam, they would never have something. That I'm still looking at. Like I'm not not too sure what the what the format is. So so if you configure a trunk on this side, um, it will it will try to negotiate a trunk. It will actually send out uh, negotiation pa packets saying, "Hey, I want to be a trunk. I want to be a trunk." So this side can be auto. Um, which which uh, which will go either way, but it doesn't try to negotiate a trunk. It could be uh, desirable, um, or it could be uh, set to a trunk on the other side. Is that I, 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 half of my brain is still trying to figure out the the format of that question? Okay, let me let me just I'll just stop because I'm I'm going to be staring at that and I'm not going to be able to I'm I'm just going to start twitching. Let's go to the next one. Um, so. Based on the output of show MAC address table on this command shown below, where will the switch that produced where will the switch that produced this output send a frame with the destination MAC address of all Fs? Think about that one. What do you think? Where will the switch produce this output? Oh. What do you think? Chat in chat in your your answer. Good. You guys got it. It's hands down B. So, so what is this MAC address? It's a broadcast. And what does a switch do with a broadcast? So, so that we ran into this in the last session. Um, it's where, where, um, let me flip that back. Um, where like there's all this superfluous information, all this information outside of what the it's like it's a broadcast. It doesn't matter what the MAC address table is. It will send a broadcast out all ports listed and unlisted except the port that it came in on, the originating port. So, um, so th those are sometimes those you you can end up looking into those a lot more. Good. Um, so squirt. Yep. All Fs would be a broadcast frame. Um, all interfaces. Yep. Good. 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 All right. Next question. Your assistant just finished configuring a small test network as part of his training. The network is configured as shown in the diagram below. When testing the configuration, you find that host A in the diagram can't ping host B. Okay, so this guy cannot ping that guy. Which of the following pairs of connections are required to be in the same subnet for host A to ping host B? What do you guys think? Choose all that apply. Mm -hmm. Networks. Which of the following are required to be in the same subnet? So I'm seeing a couple of people chatting in. Yep. Uh, a. So let's look at that. The IP address of the serial zero slash zero interface on router A and router B. Yeah. So, so the so you're saying this right here should be in the same subnet. And I would say absolutely, yeah, because otherwise those two routers can't communicate. Let's see, IP address of host B and the IP address of fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 of router B. So host B, yeah? I'd say, yeah, those have to be in the same subnet in order to communicate. 
And grab my click. Uh, IP address of fast Ethernet interface of router A and the IP address of fast Ethernet of router B. New, new, new. And, and, and key, key fact here, guys. Every interface of a router is a subnet. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, you're looking at the question. Every interface of a router is a subnet. So, so you, you, cannot, you could not have this and this being on the same subnet. Um, so IP address of host A and the IP address of fast Ethernet of router B. Nope, different subnets. Host A and IP address of, nope. IP address of host A and IP address of switch A. Oh, that's tricky. That's tricky. So talk to me about, about this. This this would be, so I know I, I saw somebody um, think about it. So does this have to have an IP address in the same subnet? And the answer is no. Even though it's on the same network, the, the, the host does not communicate with the switch. It goes through the switch. So that's, that's a tricky one. Um, <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> slow, slow reader. Sorry about that. Um, me too. The IP address of host A and the IP address of fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That has to be the same. So those all must be on the same subnet in order. So I saw, a few, I saw a few people, A, B, G. That's, I would, you're right there with me. I, I would vote that yes. Good, good, good. We got it. Nice. So every, just remember, every interface of a router is a subnet. So you would never have subnets kind of bleeding between routers or anything like that. So we're, we're good. Good, 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 good. All right, next up. Which of the following methods of tunneling Internet Protocol version 6 through an IPv4 network increases protocol overhead because of IPv6 headers? Tunneling. Keyword there. Yep. Answer is actually D. And let me make sure you guys get this because I saw um, someone mentioned A. Um, I would say A is absolutely correct if they didn't put this. So, so dual stack is the preferred way of moving to IPv6. It's where you have a network. Uh, let's just have a network right there, whatever, whatever network it is, right? Um, there's your computer. And it's all running IPv4. And so you just do IPv6 on top of that. So you run both protocols at the same time. Um, and once everything's migrated, then you just stop using IPv4 and, and it works. It's, it's great, it's a really easy way of doing it. Um, protocol translation is where you've got a router. So let's just say you've got uh, part of your network that's running IPv4 and over here is IPv6. That's where you literally do NAT. Um, it's a, a protocol translation version of NAT and translate those over, but it's not a tunneling method. Again, tunneling method. IPv6 over dedicated WAN links, again, not a tunneling method. That guy is the only one that is a tunneling method. So I'll check the answer and bam, we are correct. So that is, that is your, your IPv6 migration question. And I'm seeing more and more of those. Um, in CCNA, which tells me that uh, the IPv6, they're, 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 it's, it's getting faster and faster. And so, I mean, it's been decades that I've been saying that, but it, it's really happening now. So question 25, which Cisco iOS command can be used to troubleshoot switch startup problems on a Catalyst 2950 switch? What do you think? Switch startup program problems. That's that's a tough one. Um, my my initial answer would be for a, a command that's not even there. Show version um, because at the the bottom of that it would it would tell me the iOS version. It would tell me the config register. Um, but if that since that one's not there, I would say show diagnostic would be the would be the runner up, which is probably going to be the one. Oh, show post. I didn't even know that was a thing. Let's actually, <laughs> let's, let's find out. Let's, 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 let's do this. I actually have a 29. I happen, I happen to have a 2950 switch right there. Let's see what that, uh, what that does. So I'm, I'm even consoled into it. That's funny. All right. So let's, um, let's do this. Bring it up. 
Enter a couple times. Show post. Oh, there you go. There's a command I've never even used. I didn't even know that existed. So, so uh, power on self-test messages. So this goes through all. So this this is essentially when you first turn on the switch. Like if I were to pull the plug on the switch and uh, and and uh, turn it back on, uh, this would be the first thing that you would see. It goes through its power on tel uh, self-test. So there you have it. <laughs> like I said, learn something new every day. So here's what I was talking about: is show version is where I was going because this this will show your I O this this also comes up during the boot process shows your iOS version and then the big one that usually causes issues is the configuration register down here at the bottom, um, but um, but so show show post it is cool. All right, next question. Um, so question 26, which command, now I'm nervous, which command would be used to list the timers version of spanning tree and the bridge ID of the local and designated switch for a specific VLAN on a Cisco Catalyst 2950 series switch? So when you're talking about spanning tree, the, the, the answer is definitely show spanning tree. Um, this is where, so all the other ones focus in on VLANs, but, and, and we can, we can bring it up right <laughs> now. I'm like, I'm like, so let's bring it up and see it before I hit the answer just to make sure that's the right. Answer. So hang on, let, let, let's, let's do the check answer. Yes, it is the show spanning tree. Um, so right there, uh, bring it up on the switch, show spanning tree. Um, and you can actually type in a specific VLAN number. You know, so show me because it actually runs a spanning tree per VLAN instance. So you can see right there is VLAN one. So if you just wanted to see that one, you could. And this tells you who the root of the network is. And, and I mean, we could we could branch into a whole long lesson of, of spanning tree right here. Who is the root of this network? Which this this switch happens to be the root. Um, and then it says, and who am I? Which in this case, it's kind of schizophrenic because it's the same switch. Um, but usually it would be two different switches. And then you'll, you'll see that for every single one of the VLANs that, that we have created. Literally, just, just before I started this session, I was teaching VLANs uh, for the new CCNA, and we were, we were creating VLANs and testing things out. So, so that's, that's the spanning tree side of things. Good. All right, next up. Um, mm, 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 mm. Yeah, so I've got some questions that, uh, that I'm going to answer, but uh, let's do this question first. Question 27. You have added a new router to your network using all the default settings. You can connect to everything by IP address, but the router doesn't seem to be resolving names to IP address. The DNS server is in a directly connected network. Which is of the following is most likely the problem? What do you think? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Steel, I like that. I like that. Uh not so much IP helper. I'll explain that in just a second. Fame B geek is A. No, no, no. So so good. This is this is a great question then. So let's let's talk through it. So first off, uh you failed to create an IP helper address. That would be an issue if it was a DHCP problem. And so, so you've got a router, you've got, let's just say, a, a bunch of computers over here. And on this side of the network is your DHCP server. Um, IP helper is where this guy is saying, hey, I need an IP address. Help, I need an IP address. So it sends a broadcast, and the IP helper command will take that broadcast, turn it into a unicast, and give it to the DHCP server, and then act as a proxy on its way back. Um, that, that would resolve a DHCP issue, but not a DNS issue. Now, the, the one that I'm, so, so it's saying, which of the following is most likely the problem? Um, the only other one that I would, I would say is this one is actually, uh, I, I look at that and I'm like, hmm, that could be a thing. Um, and the reason I say that is because, uh, well, and the reason I'm thinking it's not a thing is because it's saying, well, they need a choose two or choose one or something like that because I, I could argue that. Let me, let me show you real quick. Uh, grab my, my prompt. You can go into a switch. So, so if I'm on my switch, I can go into global configuration mode and type in no IP domain 
Uh, oh, it's actually dash lookup. I, that would be a dumb way of, of doing it. But the fact they don't have a, a, a dash there. Yes, and you're right on, uh, Ben. It is. It, IP, uh, IP domain lookup is on by default. But if you were to do that, it would not resolve DNS names. Um, so I'm, I'm going to just say, well, that's probably not it because they don't have a dash there. So we'll, we'll look at that. So yes, I would say you probably configured an incorrect IP address. The, the reason D is not, not a thing is because um, it mentioned up here that the DNS server is on a directly connected network, so there would be no reason to use a default gateway. So let's see, it. Let's see if we're, we're on. Good. I'm curious of their... Oh, look at, look at you, Ben. Ben, you win the, the point. It says IP domain lookup is enabled by default, so you don't have to turn it off. Well, well what if I turned it off? What, what then? All right. It's <laughs> good. Next question. Uh, which of the following cables would be used to connect a router to a switch? What do you guys think? Router to a switch. Oh, yeah. It's pouring in. Good, 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 good. Uh, answer is definitely straight through. This is a, a console cable used for configuring. That's a serial cable. Crossover cable would be used if you're going switch to switch or router to router. So that's that's like a that's like give me give me a quick answer there. Yeah, for sure. Good. All right, all right. This is our last one. We've got um I've I've got this time I, I've bled over every single time uh, and gone like hours long. Um, so. I'm going to keep this 30 minutes. This will be our last one. And then uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, same time, I'm going to do a, uh, another CCNA study session. So we'll keep going with this uh, at that point. So here we go. Question 29, Teslit. Um, click on each on the scenario to expand. Okay, so scenario, let's see. <laughs> Use the command output from router 1 and router 2 to answer the question. Okay. Here, wow, there's our outputs. Okay, so router 2, hang on. Wow. Okay, let me, let me go down. And here's our exhibit. It says, which of the following, so the question is, which of the following interfaces have no existing configuration? Okay, so <laughs> exhibit, they're like, yeah, throw a couple things on there and a couple lines. It, that doesn't really help much. Okay, so let's look. So uh, what I would do, if I were getting this question on a real exam, I would look at the answer. I'd go, okay, I would, I would weed out the answers one by one. i go, okay, fast Ethernet. Oh, hey, look at that. Oh, wait, a ah, I ruined it. It was... It was the first time it gave us a, a non check everything thing, and I, and it and it took my answer right away. That was so lame. <laughs> I did I didn't get a chance to. Anyway, um, okay. So what? Let me explain what I would have done, and and then um, and then uh, and then then we can look back and see why it's why it's the right answer. So. Um, uh, what I would have done is I would have gone to this first one and said fast and then scroll back up. This is, I'm just giving you some testing strategy right here. I would scroll back up and look at the output and I go, okay, is that it? No. And then you go back and forth. So, so let's look just for, cause I, I just, it's like popping the balloon. I just ruined it. Fast Ethernet at zero slash one on router one. Um, so router one, let's look at fast Ethernet zero one. Okay. Yeah. Administratively down line is down. That means it's shut down. Um, I don't see any IP address configuration. Uh, in there at all, so so you can see any time. Okay, so we're seeing up line is so I, okay. So I get what this is what this is asking is it's they're wanting you to see like if it's up that means that somebody turned it on. It's just not plugged in or or the switch is turned off or something like that. As you go up up and up is obviously that's a functional interface. It even has an IP address on there two fifteen dot six dot six. Um, this very top one. Ooh, look at this. Oh yeah, it's administratively down. It's shut down, but look at that. It's got an IP address. Uh, which means somebody has configured it. So they're asking you which one really has no existing config. They want you to be able to recognize um, which ones of the which ones of those which interfaces. Um, it's pretty much unscathed, and, and the way you'd see that is it's shut down and there's zero configuration on it whatsoever. So that just comes through experience of seeing that show interface output. Um, this is good though. Good. We 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 actually ended right on time. So this this is cool. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna uh, stay here. I'm gonna hang out for. A little bit um, and just answer answer some of the questions in the chat if you want to chat I'll, I'll stay for about another five minutes and then um, and then I'll close it down and we'll we'll wrap up from there thanks guys this is these are fun I really enjoy doing these and I'll see you see you around